joined in the studio by Sami Jeffy. Sam, happy new year. Good to see you. Good to see you too, my brother. Fantastic see you to have there. Thank you. Happy new year. Happy new year. Many now, happy uh, returns. Let me begin this conversation with you and ask uh, how your communication bureau is doing. You lead the charge. How is it doing? Um, so far, so good. We are doing our best mm. to communicate and disseminate the messages of the National Democratic Congress, and more importantly, to hold the incumbent government accountable. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I, I don't usually like to assess myself. I like to take feedback a mm -hmm. lot. So mm -hmm. it would be good to know what you and others think about our performance so far. Mm -hmm. But um, everything we are doing is for the good of Ghana. Mm -hmm. And so to the extent that we are holding government accountable for their promises and ensuring that they serve the national interests, they take decisions that are in the interest of the people, to the extent that we are exposing the alarming levels of corruption and wastage going on in our country under the supervision of al Haji Bawumia and President Ekufuado. Mm -hmm to the extent that we are exposing their recklessness and crass economic mismanagement that has led to the imposition of many draconian policies on the already suffering masses, then I will say that we are on track. Mm. What would be your assessment of President Akufuado's leadership uh, in terms of what the Fitch, Moody's, you've seen the ratings, do you agree? It's not about whether or not I agree, mm. you see. It's about what the facts say. It's about what the reality shows. Mm. And if you look at the factual circumstances of our lives as a people, you cannot but agree with Fitch and the other international financial agencies who have all downgraded Ghana relative to our economy. Mm okay, our economic outlook. You cannot but, but agree with them that our economy is in shambles, our economy is in tatters, our economy has collapsed. In fact, as we speak, we don't have an economy. The that finance is a minister truth. disagrees. No, the finance minister rather agrees with me mm. because a few weeks ago you heard him say mm. that without the passage of the e-levy, our economy will collapse. Now, if you have an economy that, according to the finance minister, is built to collapse should a policy that can only bring in some 6.9 billion mm. cities is not approved, then it means the economy has already collapsed. You understand? And so we have gotten to a point where we are no longer, or we, we are at high risk of debt distress. And that is why for the first time in the history of this fourth republic, Fitch has downgraded us to be negative. We have never gotten there as a country. Mm. Even in our hippie days, we had a better economic outlook than we have today. Today, our public debt has risen from 120 billion in, as at December 2016, when the Mahama administration was leaving office, to 344.5 billion as at November 2021. The president says, look at the things I've done with it. What has he done with free that? Free SHS, one no. district, free one SHS. Factory, one village, when, when, one when, when, No, no, hold on. When we're talking about borrowed funds, mm. you cannot be talking about free SHS because free SHS is being funded with our oil revenue and not with borrowed funds. Mm. I'm talking about our public debt galloping from 120 billion mm. to 344.5 billion in only five years. Note that, you see, from the tenure of Kwame Nkrumah to the government of present uh, Kufu, our public debt was 9.8 billion cities. That is if you take out what we were forgiven right. when we joined the mm. HIPIC program mm. of the IMF and the World mm. Bank. Mm. And so President Kufu bequeathed a public debt of 9.8 billion to the Mills administration. Mm. In four years, that debt was increased by about 26 billion. Okay, so 
when President Mills was leaving office, our public debt stood at about 36, 37 billion right. CDs as a country. So in four years, he added, President Mills added about 26, 27 billion mm -hmm. to our public debt. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then President Muhammad takes over, and because of his vision to uh, ensure a rapid, um, 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 rapid investments in infrastructure and all that. We contracted a lot of loans for developmental projects that are tangible. Mm. Uh, the Terminal 3 project, okay, well, even Terminal 3 was done on the books of the Ghana Airport Company. But you can talk about the Ridge Hospital, the University of Ghana Medical Center, mm. the, 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 the Kaswa Interchange, and the, the host of infrastructural projects in all sectors of our lives, which mm. was built all across the country by the XWAL NDC Maham administration. And so after four years when we're leaving office, mm. we had increased the public debt by another 84 billion. Okay. And so from 36 billion, the public debt hit. And with what, that 120 billion, you could see tangibly what we had used the money for. In the area of education, like I said, you could see our e-blocks. We commenced uh, the construction of 124 of them, mm. completed and commissioned almost 50 mm. of that with the rest at different levels of completion. You could see district hospitals that were investing in, regional hospitals in Upper West, in Upper East, mm. you know, airports, the Wa Air Strip, the Hu Airport, um, the rehabilitation of the Kumasi Airport, the KJTR market, the Kutukraba market. You could see investments in the productive sectors of the economy, investments that can create jobs, investments that can pay for mm. the loans that were contracted for those investments. Mm. A typical example is our Tuabo gas plant, which had its rules, has its rules in the Mills administration, but was actually um, 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 undertaken under the Mahama administration, a $1 billion investment. Okay, that today has ensured that we have a gas processing factory. Now, that project saves this country almost $300 million every year. Money that hitherto was being used on the importation of gas mm. to power our power plants. Mm. Now we are processing about 50% of the gas that we, we, we need for our power plants in this country because okay. of that investment. Mm. And that investment can pay for the loan, it, 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 the loan which was contracted for mm -hmm. that project. Mm. That is what visionary leadership is about. And, and so President Mahama, now. hold on. Mm. So President Mahama also increased the public about 84 billion. Right. Then comes Alhaji Bawumi and President Kufuado. Those who said that Burun was a lazy approach to governance. Those who said that the Atisikas was welcome there. Mm. Those who said that they had worked at the Bank of Ghana before and they knew that there was money in Ghana. Those who said that we could build roads with just road tolls and not borrow it. Uh, borrow. They come in and in only five years, that debt has ballooned from 120 billion to 344.5 billion, an increase of 224 billion. That is more than a 200% increase in our public debt. Mm. And so because of this, interest payments mm. and amortization, which stood at 14 billion as of December 2016, has now risen to 46 billion as of 2022. What that means is that when we collect our taxes in this country, mm. this year government is projecting to collect tax revenue of 80 billion. 46 billion of that will be used to just will be used on just one thing debt servicing interest payment and amortization it used to be 14 billion they lambasted us insulted us called us incompetent called us all manner of names and today we are spending 46 billion on debt servicing alone today when you divide the public <clears throat> debt of ghana 344 billion by a population of 30 million every Ghanaian, including a one day old child owes a hopping 12,000 Ghana cities. Is that not too simplistic? It's not too simplistic. Mm. They used to do that same analysis when they were in opposition. Mm. Or say Chairman Sabunzu used to do that. He used to share the public debt of the country for the citizenry. Now, what is there to show for all these you don't unprecedented... See anything. Do you see anything? You tell me. Has this government built one secondary school for the people of this country to at least deal with the obnoxious or the much-dreaded double-track system? Have they built a university anywhere? At least the Mills Mahama administration can point to the UHAS University mm. in the Volta region that is training a lot of health professionals for Ghana today. We can boast of the University of Energy and Natural Resources in Sumyane, okay, a town where I was raised, training a lot of people, for, for young people, okay, for this country. We can boast of the University of um, Environment and Sustainable Development in Eastern region, which we contracted the money for. 
what can they boost for? This is education. STEM, uh, V-blocks. Maza, uh, all that is cheap sloganeering and nothing more. But, but that's not you fair. Go that's on not the, fair to but the when you go on the ground, show me one secondary school mm. that has been built from scratch, completed and operationalized by this government as we speak. They say five years. They say they have NVTI uh, constructions going on. I'm yeah. not talking about ongoing projects. Mm. As for that one, <laughs> every government can point to some. But that's show what me, they're using the money I for. I said, show me mm. one project which has been started by this government, completed and operationalized. You can show me one. Not even one district hospital. This is the only government in the history of Ghana which has not built a single district hospital. Hope for the 111. 111, they gave us one year within which they were going to build the 111 hospital. It's been over eight months. Have they even dug the foundation, a foundation for even one of those 111 hospitals. You see, I can't say that, oh, they were not done, it has been well. To what, wait, what does it mean? Mm. Talk is cheap. And these people, that is what they specialize in. Braggers, talkatives, in, in terms of sloganeering, mm. in terms of catchy phrases, they are the best, they are the experts. But when it comes to the real deliverables, the real work on the ground, they are always found wanting. I'm saying that they don't have one district hospital, one not one regional hospital to mm. show for all these unprecedented borrowing. So what investments are they making in the area of health? What investments are they making in the area of commerce? Have they built a market anywhere? What, what are they doing for this country to justify all these borrowings? COVID, and so we have got COVID into... came to derail everything no, they no, had no, built. That's, that's what... Uh, no, we no, no, we no, cannot no, explain no, 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 please. That please, globally, please. COVID affected no, 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 everybody, no, no. and no, no, we have no, no, been no. hit as well. So when you go to Cote d'Ivoire and Burkina yeah. Faso, the government is not building schools because of COVID. The government is not building hospitals because of COVID. COVID is a reason. COVID went and chartered Boeing 737, that luxurious private jet for President Kufuado. COVID did that. COVID is the reason why we have wasted 12.8 billion on corruption and financial sector irregularities in 2020 alone. That is because of COVID. COVID is the reason why we cannot account for about 2 billion cities of oil revenue, as reported by PIAC. COVID is the reason why they spent 600 million cities equivalent to 6 trillion old mm. Ghana cities mm. on the procurement of, of face masks, hand sanitizers, and Veronica Bacchus for the few secondary schools we have in this country. COVID is a reason why they spent 55 million cities, mm. equivalent to 550 mm. billion old Ghana cities on just kinky and some, some dry rice, okay, with egg for a few people who live in Kaswa, Kumase, and Accra it, it during was the three for, it weeks was of lockdown. Pro poor people. COVID is not a reason why we are in this mess. Let me tell you something. There was sardine as part of the King King no, 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 package, no, no. too. <laughs> you didn't see this. Listen, thing. but all that could not have cost the nation 550 billion old Ghana cities. You know that that expenditure is not justifiable. It is hyper inflated. And should they allow for a forensic audit into that expenditure? we will see the rot. Why are you not calling on. for it? We have called for it. The minority in parliament has called for it. They have blocked it. It is one of the reasons why Dumilivo was hounded out of office because they could not stand his, 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 his um, integrity. They knew that that man was not going to cover up mm. the, the rot that has gone on. They knew that they, would, they, they were going to be exposed. My brother, in only four years, we have lost 32 billion Ghana cities to corruption in the public sector alone, according to the 2020 Auditor General's report. Check page six and check the table there. In 2017, we lost 12 billion cities to corruption in the public sector. By 2020, we have lost 12.8. If you add the monies we have that alone, is it because of COVID that we are losing all these money? Is it because of COVID that President Ekufuado is living like a Russian oligarch and an Arabian king throwing parties every day? Eh? During the Christmas festivities, did you pass by his house at Nima? From 22nd to the 2nd of January, every day there was a party there. Really? And how did you, how did you get to know? Lakers. How did you get to know? Because I used to, I used to ply that route. Were you invited? Ah, uh -huh. you think that... <laughs> President Agu Fuadu invites Amir Jemfi to his house. Look at the parties they've been drawing around. Look at allocations to the Office of Government Machinery. In 2017, mm. allocations to the Office of Government Machinery, the Jubilee House, just behind here, mm. was 79 million cities. Do you know the allocations to the Office of Government Machinery for 2020? 892 million. 2021, 2.2 .2 billion. 2022, 3.2 billion. That is what they are wasting the taxpayers' money on. You see? But we, the are in, must run. we are in this debt distress position mm. where investors have lost confidence in our economy. Our economy has been downgraded. 
Okay, we've lost access to the commercial market. In November last year, we went for green bonds. We didn't even get a dollar because nobody wants to lend us money because they are not sure that we'll be able to service those debts. We are in this position because of the recklessness and mismanagement of this government. And, and the climax of that was what we saw in 2020, where our budget deficit hit a record high of 15.7%. Mm. It has never happened in the last 30 years of this country. Def a budget deficit of 15.7%. COVID is a pandemic. Mm. Johnny, you understand? I do. That means that all countries in the world have suffered from COVID. Check our neighbors. Don't go far. Check Burkina Faso, Cote d'Ivoire, and so on. Check their budget deficit in 2020. Mm. Cote d'Ivoire recorded a budget deficit of 15.6%. Burkina, 5.7%. Senegal, 5.8%. 6.4%, uh, Nigeria, 5.8%, Ghana, 15.7%. You know what this means? I don't know, but see, I, I'm, the, I'm, the looking at, deficit, I'm looking at you adding also, comparing that with the GDP uh, and, and all no, the inflation. No. When we are talking about budget <coughs> deficit, mm. it is a measure of how responsible right. a government is. Mm. Because the budget deficit, in simple terms, means, you see, your budget is made up of mainly two things, mm. revenue projections, and expenditure. Right. Now you're supposed to, your expenditure is supposed to match your revenue. Mm. You cannot be earning a salary of 5,000 Ghana cities a month as Johnny Hughes mm. and be spending 10,000 cities a month. That means you are overspending. Mm. You are spending more than you are generating. But you can't in just revenue. single that no, out uh, and use no, that hold on, to, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold to on, say the hold government on, has failed. Hold on. Mm. We recorded a budget deficit of less than 7% in 2016. Do you know the names they called us in 2016 what did for they that budget? You? They said we were reckless, we were useless, we were incompetent. And they passed a Fiscal Re Responsibility Act. Of 5%. Committing mm. not to exceed a budget deficit of 5% henceforth. But in 2020, they recorded a budget deficit of 15.7%, meaning that they so overspent. Mm. Okay, and that is what is, has led to an astronomical rise in our public debt. But in because 2020, if you are spending that was when money COVID you don't have, there. it that means that you are borrowing. In 2020, that was where COVID was And I'm there. saying so that they Cote d'Ivoire had, to had COVID, that law. but their budget deficit was 5.6. Mm -hmm. Burkina had COVID, but their budget deficit was 5.7. Ghana, young Kwan had them. Why? Population-wise. Even so countries population that, that had lockdowns for months. Mm. Did not record budget deficit of more than ten percent. Not to talk of fifteen point seven. So in effect, what you're saying. So that this is what has led. Mm. This is what led to the reckless borrowing. You see, they wanted to win the twenty twenty elections at all costs. You see, the money was so used they were for distributing monies to market women in the name of under the guise of COVID support, buying votes, wasting the pu public funds. In twenty nineteen alone, President Kufuado in nine months spent sixty three million cities, equivalent to six hundred and thirty billion, on the rental of hyper-expensive private jets alone, 630 billion. You know that is a fact. But, but then he says when he travels, and in 2020, he brings, he brings you goodies, the loans, the vaccines. All the trips he has made in 2022, what has it brought this country? So he couldn't have, he, he, let's even assume that he brought us something. He couldn't have brought us those things if he had traveled in the Dassault Falcon 900 EX, our presidential jet. He couldn't have brought us those things if he had lived, he, he had led by example by cutting his coat according to the size of his cloth, by living within his means, by adopting austerity measures. You claim there is COVID. You want Ghanaians to tighten their belt. But you are living like an Arabian king. Go to their parties and go and see the kind of drinks, hard liquors, men of their age are drinking. All being funded by taxpayers of this That's country. That's an allegation. And that is why. That's today, an allegation. That, but of course, of course, you don't know. So you call it an allegation. But you know, if you see some of the, I'll share some of the videos of mm. those parties mm. to you. Okay. You, and, and, and the workers groups in this country are seeing that. As we speak, NAPCO beneficiaries have not been paid for over six months. They have been promised that they will be paid. <laughs> so they can, they can go to supermarkets and they can go to the market and shop with that promise. That promise is, is currency, right? It's consideration. Johnny, they've not been paid for six months. Mm. Today, Tehu is on strike. Tertiary Education Workers Union, mm. they're on strike. They've, CITAC, they've, they've been teachers back. for colleges of, of education. Tehu has been called back to the table. CITAC, they are still on strike. U -tag, tag is on strike. Mm. All of them. Our, our education system is in a mess. We can't even get textbooks for busy school children. In the primary school, the minister the disagrees. He says the unions give him a citation, so he's the best minister. <laughs> My brother, does that change the fact that? 
for two years since the introduction of a new syllabus, a new curriculum for basic schools. There are no textbooks for our children and our teachers in our basic schools. Does that change the fact that for four tranches now, mm -hmm. almost one year, the capitation grant has been in our areas? How are headmasters running these schools? They are borrowing to run these schools. Does it change the fact that for almost one year, mm -hmm. releases to CHAS for the running of SHS has not gone? Does it change the fact that the double track system, which they promised to end mm -hmm. in a period of seven years, is getting worse? And today, the academic calendar at the SHS level is in complete tatters. Is it not true that today even accommodation for university students is a problem? People are deferring their courses because they didn't get accommodation on campus. They have to go and rent hostels and they don't have the money to do so. They are not investing in anything. They are just, this government is not governing. No. They are, are just they chilling. Oh, That's what they are doing. Oh, yeah, and they don't care about what is going on how? in this country. You don't see the but, town hall But we need to talk there. about E-Levy. We'll, we'll talk, we'll talk about so, e so This is just I, my I, assessment. I know. In, in short, my assessment of, mm. of their performance relative to the economy is that today, the outlook of our economy is graded as being negative. It has mm. never happened in the history of this country. What it means is that we are on our way to the mortuary. We have already died. We are on our way to the mortuary. Mm. Nobody, that, I mean, if you get to a stage where investors are no longer willing to lend you money, mm. you get to a stage where your finance minister is saying that if you don't approve E-Levy, which will give me $6.9 billion in 2022, our economy will collapse. He's now emotionally blackmailing us. If you get to that state, then it means you don't have an economy. What do you have against and the e And in any advanced mm. jurisdiction, mm. the finance minister would have resigned by now. And Alaji Bahumia, the, the, the once um, 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 economic messiah, economic mm. waste kid of the MPP, the paragon of all economic knowledge, who today has turned himself into an IT champion, would have resigned by now. You understand that? You want Baumia and Kenofuriata to resign? I'm, I'm, I'm telling you that that is the reasonable thing for them to do under the circumstances. And in any advanced jurisdiction, they would have done so. The president is happy with their service to the nation. Why wouldn't he be happy? The man, the country is on autopilot. The man doesn't know what is going on. In, in the, all he cares about is to get Boeing. Now, is he's he, is he, he not here anymore. He's now angry that we are talking about his uh, luxurious travel. So he says he will not even hide the jet again. He has leased it. So if you go to Terminal 3 now, the jet is there. Whether he's traveling or not, it is there. And for every hour, we pay $14,000, equivalent to almost 1 billion cities. Taxpayers' money. Once he gets that jet, he goes and sits in. He's able to shower. There is uh, a masseuse to massage him and all that. That is all you, you Nana cares that about. Far, that the, there's a masseuse on, on the plane. Have you seen the interior of Boeing 737 before? Or the interior of Airbus ACJ320 New? It is called a pentagon in the skies. A, no, a penthouse in the skies. One of the most luxurious jets in the world. These are the kind of jets we are talking about. So the man is chilling. And that's why you are against the E-Levy. And that's why you are against the E-Levy. That is not, that is not the only reason. We are against the E-Levy because mm. of six reasons. And I'll summarize that okay, to you. Okay, quickly. Because number one, mm. number one, that is not what the MPP promised us. In... 2020, 2020, August 2020, the chairman of the economic management team, vice president of Ghana on Peace FM, told the whole country that Momo should not be taxed and Momo will not be taxed under an MPP government. Because according to him, those who use Momo are the poorest of the poor. And so taxing Momo will impoverish the masses. I didn't say that. Dr. Bagumia and the MPP said that. What has changed? That few months down the line, they want to impose a 1.75% tax. Is that 1.5? They, uh, they have not amended the bill before mm. Parliament. They mm. just told you that in the media. Until mm. the bill is amended, it is 1.75. You. you understand? You. So the point is, what has changed? Mm. Why this deception? And that is why I maintain that Dr. Baumia is the biggest flip-flopper we have had in the history of this country. He's not here to defend himself. The so most deceitful politician of our time. That's not fair to him. Why is, why is that not fair? You tell us only in August 2020 that Mumu should not be taxed. Mm. You get elected in off, in, in, into office and you introduce a 1.75% tax and now he has gone such. Where is Dr. Bawumia? Have you heard him on the E-Levy? So the first reason why we are against the E-Levy is because it is deception. This mm. is not what we were promised. Mm. The second reason why we are against the E-Levy is that the e What is it? It is theft. Oh. You must understand that. GFC. You see, it is not a tax, it is theft. We have a tax regime as a country. 
Mm. In Ghana, there are five forms of taxes. There is income tax, corporate organizations pay corporate income tax mm. on their profit, individuals pay personal income tax on their wages and salaries. We have VAT, which is an expenditure tax. You pay as you spend, mm. consumption tax. We have um, 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 excise duty, import duty, imposed mm -hmm. on imported items. Mm -hmm. Okay? We have, um, uh, I said excise duty, right. I mean import duty right. tariffs. Mm. We have excise duty imposed on uh, alcohol and products that are deemed to be harmful mm -hmm. and so on, petroleum products. Then we have levies and so on. In Ghana, under our tax regime, mm. we do not tax savings. That's right. We do not tax capital or investments. Mm -hmm. We do not tax redrawals. But the E levy, if approved, will be imposed on savings. It will be imposed on capital. Mm. It will be imposed even on non-taxable funds. My brother, if you get paid your salary here at TV3 mm. of, say, 10,000 Ghana cities, okay, that money would have already been taxed. You would have paid your income tax already. Now, if you redraw that money from your bank account, and you decide to save it. You see, you can decide to save that money under your pillow, or in your purse, or in your bag, or in your bank account, or in your Momo account. Your Momo account is like your wallet. It's like your purse. That is why it is called e wallet. Okay. If you decide to save the money under your pillow, you won't pay a tax. If you decide to save it in a savings account in, your, in, a, in a bank, you won't pay a tax. But if you decide to save it in your electronic wallet, which is your Momo account, Dr. Bawomia says he will charge you 1.75% e-levy. On savings, can you go into my purse or my bag and tax me for saving money? Is that an echo? I mean, it, it, it beats my imagination. Ridiculous. Again, and that's why you call it theft. Again, again, if mm. I, that same 10,000 Ghana cities, if I want to invest it into a business, you don't charge me a tax for for just investing the money. You wait for me to invest the money, make profit, then I pay corporate income tax, pay and other forms of taxes. Mm. Are, are you getting me? Mm. But today, if you are transferring capital, say you want to import rice from Thailand, mm -hmm. and you transfer one million Ghana cities to your suppliers in Thailand, because you did a bank transfer, right. Dr. Bawumia says you pay 1.75% of that, which is equivalent to 17,500 mm. as tax on your capital, not your profit. Capital. Capital. For every transaction you do with your capital, whether you send it through Momo mm. or whether you send it through your bank account, it is your capital, your investment, yet you'll be paying taxes on that. Even when you go to the bank to withdraw money with your own ATM card or you go to a Momo vendor to withdraw your own money, you are paying a tax on that because it is an electronic transaction. In what advanced country have you seen a tax like this? In Tanzania and Kenya, they are e-levies. But you know what they do? Yeah. The e-levy is a tax on the fees you pay for that electronic transaction. Mm -hmm. So when you send Momo of 1,000 cities in Ghana, MTN collects 10 cities fees. Right. So Kenya and Tanzania has imposed a tax of 10% on that fee. On the 10 cities. On the 10 cities, okay. not on the transaction amount. <laughs> Alaji Baomia and President Akufuadu says, no, you have already been taxed. MTN has deducted 10 cities on that 1,000 Ghana cities. The one going to withdraw will also pay another 10 Ghana cities. You understand? We, the, the telcos will pay taxes on that. So you have already paid taxes. Mm. But that is not enough. We are coming to you, the ordinary Ghanaian. So now, your money, we have to take 1.75%. That is stealing. That is naked TV. That is not taxation. And you see, this e-levy will lead to Many forms of multiple taxation. Like what? Number one. Mm. Number one, if you go to a supermarket now to buy products, okay, and you are given a bill, that bill would have would include taxes. Right. VAT, mm. NHIL, and all that. It would be there, get fund, all the taxes tax would be there. Mm. Right? Now, when I decide to pay cash. I won't pay any tax apart from those taxes impo uh, imposed on the, on, the, on the total price of the items, the purchase items. But when Johnny decides to help Ghana build a cashless society, when Johnny decides to go digital, like Dr. Bawumia, and decides to pay for the price of those purchase items with his momo, even though those items have already been taxed, he will pay an e-levy of 1.75% on top of the taxes again. So they are taxing the medium of payment. But the government says we want to create jobs with that. We want to also help uh, 
to build your roads that you, you complain see, about. You see, Patrick Kwan to my team, because they are desperate and frustrated, mm. they will tell you anything and <coughs> everything just to justify the e-levy. But ask them, you have borrowed 224 billion in only five years. You couldn't create jobs with 224 billion. You are not even able to pay NAPCO beneficiaries with borrowed funds of 234 billion. Now 6.9 billion never your day. What magic can 6.9 billion do? Masa, this year, mm. they are saying that the agenda for creating jobs is you start entrepreneurship. Mm. They've budgeted 1 billion for that. They are projecting to rake in 6.9 billion from e-levy. That is just a projection, 6.9 mm. billion. Do you know how much they have allocated out of that 6.9 billion e-levy receipts to use that? 385 million. That is just about 5% of what they have projected to raise from the e-levy. Mm. So pay e-levy so that we will give you jobs. Here in Korea, only 5%. 385 million out of a, pro a revenue projection of 6.9 billion. Mm. Do you know where they say they'll get a rest from? Donors. These are the apostles of Ghana beyond. Which, which donors? Donors. They're saying people will come and give them money, so they will use that for you start. Again, they are saying pay, but pay e levy. The, the development see, bank has been now, set let me tell you so, something. Now, so you now, can guess, uh, now when you, uh, soft, now soft when you tell this there. government mm. that you are sick, they say pay, pay e levy, you'll be fine. You have a pot belly, mm -hmm. pay e levy, you get flat tummy. Okay? Mm. Any problem you have, pay e levy. They are, they are blackmailing you. They are now saying that pay e levy, we will give you rows. You borrow 230 billion, you couldn't build any meaningful rows for us. Mm. In four years, President Mahama had tax revenue of 86 billion. In four years, mm. excluding 2021, mm. had tax revenue of 156 billion, almost double. In four years, President Mahama had oil revenue of six billion. Mm. In four years, President Akufuado, excluding 2021, had oil revenue of 20.6 billion. Mm. You couldn't build roads with that. It is e levy which will only give you 6.9 billion that we we'll use to build roads. In any case, in any case, mm -hmm. Johnny, look at the policy incoherence. You claim you need money to build roads. Yet the road tolls we are all paying without complaints. You say you have scrapped it. The minister said and then you people turn were around. fighting there. People were fighting when they heard the finance minister okay, no in parliament problem. saying that. Was it not fighting. this same government mm. that introduced the capping and realignment policy? You came and took over a road fund. Part of the taxes we pay go into that road fund for the purpose of constructing roads. Then you introduce an obnoxious policy called capping and realignment, which means that when monies go into the road fund, you cap part of it, and you use part of it, not for road construction, but for, ad, for, for other purposes, consum mainly consumption-related purposes. And now this government, which has been capping the road fund for five years, comes to you and says, pay Ilevi, I'll build roads. And then you hurry and what do they take us for? Well, Avenue Markin said, for example, that he's at the road fund. Sometimes they have money, maybe 30 million, but they don't know which of the contractors Let me tell you, to pay because. There are two things they are going to use. It people have for. used their. It is not true. Mm. You see, Ombisi is what I'm going to What does it mean? In five years, they've had access to a total resource envelope of over 500 billion. Mm. They couldn't build roads. It is not 6.9 billion that would do any magic. There are two things they intend to do with the Finally, e -levy. let's wrap up There on are two that, things so they intend to, to do with the right. e levy. Mm. Eh? Number one, it will be used to service our debts. Look, check Appendix 4B of the 2022 budget and look at the figures there. Their own budget, not Sami mm. Jenfi's budget. They are projecting total revenue of 100.5 billion, mm. 100.5 billion in 2022. 98 has been approved. No, hold on. 105 billion. Mm. That's what they are projecting. Total revenue. All the money. Mm. That is if they are able to collect e levy and everything. Right. Now, when they collect that money, they are saying that they will use 46 billion to service our debt. And they will use 36 billion to pay workers compensation. And then they will allocate 31 billion for statutory funds. They are bound by law mm. to do so. Mm. That alone, these three budget lines alone, leads to a total of 113 billion. So it means that their total revenue projection of 100.5 billion can't even pay workers, mm. service our debt, and still have some left. That, that means for we are heading for deficit, right? Not a, a huge deficit. Mm. It means we are in crisis. 
It means that to, eat, to, to be able to even get money for statutory funds this year, we must borrow about 12 billion. And that is why they have they've given us a signal that common fund may be borrowing for the first time in the history of this country. For almost one year, this trade assembly common fund has not been paid. How, do you, how then would assemblies get monies to run the assemblies and undertake developmental projects in our communities? For two, for two um, 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 quarters, MPs common funds are not being paid. Yet this government is the most resource government in the history of the, our country. You see, it's about misplaced priorities. Mm -hmm. It's about wastage. It's about the corruption. You understand? And what is even painful in all this, Johnny, is that the timing of this e levy, the timing of the e levy. Is it bad? This year, 2022, mm. fees and charges is going up by 15%. You know what that means? It means that from, from cradle to grief, from the time you are born to the time you would die, every government service you seek, the price you pay for that will go up by 15%. When you are born today, you are giving birth today, your birth certificate fees, 15% increment. When you die, death certificate fees, 15% increment. Mortuary fees, 15% increment. Um, passport, 15% increment. Road worthy certification, 15% increment in the fees. Driver's license, 15% increment. You are a student in a public university, your school fees, 15% increment. Polytechnic student, your school fees, 15% increment. College of Education, your school fees, 15% increment. Nursing training, school fees, 15%. All the fees we pay to government mm. are going up by 15% this year. Check the dollar. Now you need, as far as it was 6.5, now 6.6. .6. In some forest bureau, you need 60, 70 pesos to get a dollar. Check price of fuel. Today we are told that the prices will be going up again. Right. Last year alone, the, the price of a gallon of diesel and petrol went up by a whopping nine Ghana cities. This year, we are on the same trajectory. Prices of commodities on the market are skyrocketing by the day. Mm. People are suffering. There, there are strikes and agitations on the, on, on, on the labor front. Mm. And all this government cares about is the imposition of an obnoxious, see the way they are jumping over themselves in parliament, mm. just to punish Ghanaians for a mess they themselves have created, mm. just to blackmail us into paying a tax which will not even be used for development. It will be used to service our debt. And you know, when they are done with that, you know what they will do. Immediately, the E-Levy is passed. Mm. They are going to monetize the E-Levy. You don't know that for No, no, no. That's what they are going to do. They are going to collateralize the e levy for a loan for the next seven years. Why to are you 10 so years. sure about that? Because that is what they did to get fund. You, they, they have something they call Dutch. You see, the public debt, which has reached, tre, tre, which has reached mm. 344.5 billion, excludes Dutch. You know Dutch. Mm -hmm. President Rollins created Get Fund. 2.5% of that goes there mm. for educational infrastructure. Mm. Every government comes, collects that, and uses that for educational infrastructure. They came and said, no. We will bring something called that change. We will collateralize get fund. The monies we are yet to collect for the next 10 years, we will collateralize it for a loan of $1.5 billion. So now when we collect taxes for get fund, about 60% of that is used to pay that debt. That debt is $2.4 billion. They have done the same thing to ESLA. Mm. The ESLA, they, they, they called names. They said it was a nuisance tax. They were going to abolish and all that. Energy sector levy, right? Yes. Mm. They've collateralized it for a loan of $9.3 billion. So that the ESLA that you and I were supposed to pay for only five years, per the plans of the Mahama administration, now it has been increased by 30%, and now we are going to pay for 15 years. So it's the same thing they have done to our bauxite, Sino Hydro. Mm. You understand? And it's the same thing they want to do with E-Levy. E-Levy will only allow this government the fiscal space to borrow more. They are going to run to the investors and tell them that, look, we now have a new tax which can give us $7 billion every mm. year. So if you lend us money, we'll be able to pay. So we are collateralizing receipts from the E-Levy. Mm. So, or are going to carry forward. That's the, every that's year, the every year, E-Levy will give them $7 billion, but give us $70 billion to spend today. So for the next 10 years, when we collect E-Levy, we'll use it to pay that debt. That is what they want are to you, do. Are you guys deliberately pushing the government to IP, IM, IMF? We mm. pushing the, I, the government to IMF. Because it, what it, it appears that's what you want them to, to do. Are we the so ones? There's no. some form of are we, the ones, are we the ones who downgraded our economy to B minus? Are we Fitch? Are we, are, they say, are we the investors who are refusing to lend them money? 
Are we the ones who supervise that unprecedented, reckless budget deficit of 15.7% in 2020? Are we the ones responsible for all the wastage and the corruption that has gone on in the last five years? Mm -hmm. How can we be blamed for that? How can we be blamed for But you see, they must be made to face the full consequences of their act. And that is why I like what uh, Dr. Steve Mantia said. Right. That if it would take the IMF, okay, to, to pump, I don't want to say to pump some sense, but if it would take the IMF to make our government responsible, then so be it. We are not the ones that, you see, there are options. The government has cut down they the numbers of ministers, for example, compared to what they had in the first administration, yet, clearly. Yet they, yet they have increased the salary, the wages and salaries of ministers by 70%. 70%. At the time, the wages and salaries of public sector workers was increased by a paltry 4%. You yes, increase that of your appointees by to get seven 70%. Now. Mm -hmm. And the president came and checked that, that, oh, he has refunded his. So Babumia and the other appointees should refund theirs. Still, they check. None of them have refunded those monies to them. Mm. Okay? You have cut down on your ministers, but you are increasing allocation to the Office of Government Machinery. Last year, you did $2 billion, Jubilee House. This year, 3.2 billion. What do they do with the money at the Jubilee House? Do they cook the, the currency news and, and eat it or what? What do they do? 3.2 billion, Office of Government. They work for the country. What and, work? And so what is there to show? And how are these monies being used to better the lives of Ghanaians? How are these monies being used to create jobs? What are, how are these monies being used to, uh, to improve quality health delivery in our country, quality education in our country? You seem How not to see anything. How is money being used to improve roles? You, you seem not to see anything. But you seem to see a lot of good things uh, in this government. So show me some. About the Akufa government. You show me some. The, you see, you know that what I'm saying is the truth. The only difference here is that I'm sitting in this chair and you are here. You if, if we you're... change the position, you say words <laughs> that I'm saying. Because I've been watching Johnny's bite. <laughs> and you see, they don't like people like you who keep them on their toes, who hold them Stop accountable PJ. for their promises. Mm. So what I'm saying is that mm. the e-levy is not justifiable. It is not a tax, it is theft. It is a deception, that is not what we were promised. The timing is bad. Mm. They are only seeking to punish us for their own mess, for their own recklessness and mismanagement. It will not be used to create jobs, it will not be used to build roads, it will not be used for the development of this country. It will only allow them to borrow more and worsen the economy. The E-Levy is back on the other paper, according to Kamala Kluche, who is our parliamentary correspondent. The speaker is not around. And we don't know what happened the other time when the speaker was not around. Joe said was who wanted to vote. Uh, the minority said, we won't allow you to vote. And it was the brawl. They have apologized and said they won't go that route again. But this morning, it's back on the other paper. Speaker, back being is not there. What's on your mind? So it's a dresser for back. <laughs> what about the breastfeeding mothers? The, 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 Amado the, you mean? Yeah, who? members of parliament who have... Um, one month uh, old babies and all that. I, they also back. What about the Minister for Energy, the one who just undergone uh, surgery and uh, has been advised by his doctors, okay, to, to, to rest and recuperate and all that? Are they all back? That is how desperate they are, okay, just to pass the e election. Assuming, Assuming they are all we, back. Assuming they are all back. We are more organized than them. And so even though they have majority, 138, Mark my words, the e levy will not pass. Because as, they will as, not get that Assuming one they all come. If they all come, one of them will have to preside. And if one of them presides, and they all decide, they are signed, all the 137 decide to vote for the e levy. Our MPs, our gallant 137 MPs. And I salute them for their, for their patriotism and for, for standing with the people of this country. They have indicated that they will continue to vote against the e levy. So it will be 137, 137. And per Article 104, when a vote on a motion is a tie. Mm. The motion is considered lost. So the e-levy will be killed today mm. if they decide to proceed with the vote. Mm. I, I, and, and, <coughs> and, and, and see, the only way, the Sorry. only way mm. they can approve the e-levy under these legal circumstances mm. is for them to do their usual patapa. There are two things they are planning to do. Invade parliament with some soldiers. You know, they, they will not even be correct soldiers. Mm. They are vigilantes clad in. Uh, military this uniforms. That's a serious thing you're okay, saying. Okay, and ensure that... That's, that's a very serious yes, thing you're and saying. Yes, ensure and ensure that the first deputy speaker who will be presiding will be able to vote, even though they know the laws don't permit that. And what's the second or thing? Or two, mm. what they are planning to do is that after the voice vote, after they take a voice vote on the motion, and there is a call for division or a call for a head count, they will not recognize our leaders for them to make that call. So we just take a voice vote. The eyes have it. 
setting his agenda. That's all. Good to help. You or have this authority. Oh. Good information. From where? We have, we have, we, I mean, we have a lot of people in there. You mm. think that all the MPP MPs... You see, the only lack they have is that this is not going to be a secret ballot. They are supposed to vote in the open. And that is why even MPP MPs who are not happy with this e levy will not be able to vote against it. But most of them communicate with us, so we know what they are planning. So either they bring in soldiers and do their mm. usual patapa, or they bend the rules, okay? But I trust our MPs to do the need for. I see. You are making the work of the Ghana Health Service, the Ministry of Health, difficult. They're asking for everybody to get vaccinated. There was a caveat that was put out there that says compulsory vaccination. You seem to be on a certain path to say it is not legal and, and you're pulling strings and saying they are wrong. But do you support that? Why are you being a do, difficult do, 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 young do, 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 do man you support in a country that wants to vaccinate do you support that? people no, no, against no, no, COVID-19? No, 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 no. Do you support a directive that says that you cannot come to parliament to see your own members of parliament unless you take a jab, you take a vaccine. Mm. You cannot go to the hospital unless you take a vaccine. You cannot visit the Ministry of Health mm. or the Ghana Health Service unless you take a... Do you support such an order? In which country in Africa today mm. Is such an order being implemented? In which country? Give me one. Not even in South Africa, where they've recorded over 3 million cases of COVID-19 with over 100,000 deaths. Even UK, UK, the United Kingdom, that has recorded more than 10 million positive cases with hundreds of hundred thousand, over 100,000 deaths. Mm. Not even UK is doing that. They have now seen the light. They've seen the sense in what some of us have been saying. That what goes into people's body should be their choice. So today, Boris Johnson says, no mask mandate, no vaccine mandate, no mandates mm. related to COVID-19 in UK. They've canceled them. Because he went chilling himself. No, not because of that. Mm. That is another matter. But they've canceled all that. Mm. And today, they are going about their lives normally. You go to the US today, the US Supreme Court says, no, Osha, you cannot force workers, 18 million workers of the United States of America, to mandatorily take a job mm. lest they lose their jobs. And you want to support such a system in Ghana? Listen, number one, it has now been established. Government, you know I'm in court with them. Mm. Immediately we sealed them and they saw our statement of case. They hurriedly re reviewed mm. the mandatory uh, vaccination directives at the airport. Mm -hmm. So now I'm happy that because of our suit, Ghanaians who were stuck abroad and could not come home unless they were prepared to take a job can mm. now fly into the country. They knew it was wrong. Though. They waited for us to go to court before they reviewed that. Now, they have admitted in court processes they have filed that the vaccines are not effective. The vaccines cannot prevent transmit, cannot prevent the transmission of COVID, cannot reduce infections rates. That's what they have said. They say the vaccines only reduce, reduce the risk of hospitalizations and severe illness. And that, that's what they have said. And they've not provided a center of evidence or any data to support even the claim that the vaccines can reduce hospitalizations. Because this data is from before Scotland, the course, so let, let's uh, data, hold on so data we don't from get into Scotland, the mm. Data from Scotland, what is before the court is the, one, uh, the directives at the airport. Right. And that one, they have already done the right thing. But we will still want the court to pronounce on that so that tomorrow they will not wake up and say we are bringing it back. I, I, are you getting mm. me? What I'm talking about has to do with Mandates that are being rolled out illegally in mm. the country mm. by various state agencies. The, are you aware that some concerned doctors petitioned President Kufuor That's right. to review those mm. uh, mm. vaccine mandates? Mm. Have you seen the response from the president? I shared a copy with you. Read mm. it. The president says he has not directed any government institution to mandate vaccines in Ghana, COVID-19 vaccines. So, so he's not aware so of what is the directive. On. Yes. So he's not aware of what the Ghana Health Service is doing is not... The letter was signed by Dr. Nsiasare, his advisor on health. You can't even do that in Ghana. In Ghana, the laws are clear. It is only the president of Ghana who, by an executive instrument, can restrict freedom of movement. The president has not issued any executive instrument. It is only the minister for health who can order compulsory vaccination by an executive instrument under Section 22 hmm. of the Public Health Act of 2012, Act 851. The minister for health has not done so. The law is not on your side. The science is not on your side. Hmm. The FDA says that COVID vaccines have not been registered or approved. But if you want to they, travel no, 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 outside, no. Sami, if you want to travel outside of this country, you would need to be vaccinated. Well, you need to show your card. I went card. to the U.S. few 
months ago. It was not I demanded. I got to JFK. There was not even no test. You go to Germany, no, not even vaccination, you know, proof of vaccination, no test. But from here, if you travel, the, even the US, when they introduce those um, vaccination requirements mm. at their airports, mm. they excluded citizens and persons traveling on immigrant visas. And residents were all excluded. In the US, there is no country in the world today that required their own citizens to take a COVID vaccine before mm. their own citizens can travel. But how did Ghana. you get out of Ghana without you see, the President Akufuado mm. is doing this. Mm. President Akufuado is doing this because of one thing, money. Oh, how? Greed for, ah, the EU has given him 83 million euros. He told us in his last address to the country. Mm. And the conditionality for that money is that ensure that at least by close of 2022, 50% of your population are vaccinated. So all what he's doing is because, of, because he has been giving money. Either than that, why will he be violating the directives of the FDA? And why will he be feigning ignorance to the concerned medical doctors? Okay, we have very little time uh, to go. Let's look at President Kofado's uh, government again. Uh, I'm sure you are familiar with the ministers. Um, you obviously have given the president a downgrade. You say the government is not doing enough. The president has been very minimal in terms of reshuffle or even asking people to go away. Yesterday, on the front page of the finder, 5.3 billion has been lost in 2020 alone or declared as losses by state owned enterprises. But the president is not moving people around. Same set of people, same old faces around him. If you had a chance to meet the president, what would you tell him? <laughs> you see, I have a problem with your question because your problem, your question suggests that the problem with this government has to do with appointees. The problem, the appointees have done nothing wrong. The problem we have on our hands mm. eh, is a leadership problem. If that problem were ever a human being and had a name, the name would be Alhaji Bawumia and President Kufuado. They are our problem. Until you fix those two, you are going nowhere. While you are seeing the appointees and the other officials of mm. government mm. do, are just symptoms of a root cause. They are not the problem. Are you getting me? The problem mm. is a leadership problem. Look at President Kufuado, look at Alaji Bawumia. Do, do they look to you as people who are serious to leave behind a legacy? They don't. Do they look to you as people who are serious to transform this country? These are the people who promise us that we should vote for them in 18 months, they will transform Ghana. In 18 months, no community in Ghana will have a toilet or water problem. They said they will not even build tarred roofs or asphalt roofs for us. If you vote for them, they will give us concrete roofs. They promised us sky trains. Have you forgotten? The kind of things they have promised uh, us in um, this country. And um, said that's not possible. They don't care. They are wasting money. And so, they are learning from the leader. Okay? So the president is wasting money. Mm. So if ABIJ, Director General of Public Procurement Authority, also decides to form a con company with his brother-in-law, Talent Discovery Limited, to sell government contracts, mm. and makes 400 billion OCDs out of that, according to Shraj, money he cannot account for. Can you believe him? He's learning from President Ekufuado. And that is why President Ekufuado says, that, oh, you've done well. You go and stay home and enjoy the money. Mm. He has cleared him. To date, he has not been prosecuted. Yet there is a Shraj report indicting that man. And Shraj has the powers of a high court. President Ekufuado has left him off the hook because he is the biggest enabler and promoter of corruption in this, in this he government. He has denied that. He says you cannot say that because he, he's not clearing the agent, people like in say, Isawam, He doesn't clear The people, people. in Isawam today, mm. they've, most of them, 90% of them, denied the offenses they were charged with. Even Atai, when he was charged before a court of competent jurisdiction, he denied. So deny, mere denial is nothing. What does the evidence show? Where are the 500 excavators? Stolen. Frimpo Boate reported that matter to the police, accusing the vice chairman of the MPP in the central region, mm, Ekwe, we see government's auctioneer, mm. as the one who supervised the stealing of those excavators. Mm. And in fact, we have seen a video in which those two people were engaged in a conversation saying that uh, their party needs money, party in Jessica. You remember that video? And so they should be giving the seized excavators to their general secretary and other officials of the party to do galamse, which they have done. And they have destroyed our water bodies and our forest reserves to date. 
Where are the missing excavators? But we are fighting what about Galamse. the gold but they seized from the illegal mines? But we are fighting They've Galamse. stolen all. You but see, we are fighting Galamse. Never Galamse. in the history of this country have we had such, in the words of Sheikh Isikwe, stealers in office. But you see, people have been cowered into silence. People feel intimidated, so people are not able to, to, to speak up. And that is why I get happy now when I hear the Cali Bishop Conference saying it as it is, okay? Mm. And condemning the TV going on. Yeah, Wabi and someone says they need to bring further and better particulars. They can just make statements. But the missing excavators, what, are, what, what further and better particulars do you need again? The missing tricycles, what further and better particulars do you need again? The five million liters of contaminated fuel at BOS, which were sold to move in Pina and Zoop oil in breach of the public procurement law, what further and better particulars do you need again? There is a committee report on that, headed by Senor Husi. Haven't you seen mm. that report? Mm. Is it not a fact that today the proceeds of that transaction has not been paid into the state, into, 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 into the state coffers and has been pocketed by some people? They don't care. Is it not a fact that as a result of the PDS scam, we lost $190 million under Compact 2 from the Americans? Mm. We lost Compact 3, $500 million. Is it not true that all the electricity bills that you and I pay to PDS mm. for six months? have not been paid back the government the says they saw the corruption, they saw the fraud, and they pulled the plug. Yes, so if somebody steals from you, and you detect that, okay, and then you, you detect that, so you are going to allow the thief to go away with the loot. Is that what you're saying? For six months, we paid electricity bills to a fraudulent entity called PDS. I was not the one who said the company was fraudulent. It was Peter Mewu, the Minister for Energy. Mm. Because according to government, they duped us. The insurance guarantee they presented Fraudly. for the assets of ECG was fraudulent. It could not be uh, justified by Akut, the company which was said to have issued it. Now, this company has collected electricity bills from Ghanaians, mm. totaling over 3 billion CDs in a period of six months. You've detected that they are, fro they are fraudsters. What will any responsible government do? Collect our monies from us. But the opposition Where is, is the also, money? The opposition is also watching. You are supposed ah, what to be we do? The uh, prosecutorial... in a democracy. But what should we you, do? You, the the uh, legis the arm of legislature, are supposed to hold government no, 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 accountable. No, 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 no. There is a limit to what the opposition can do. We can do advocacy. We can invoke certain laws of this country. We can petition relevant bodies to investigate. But the final action rests with the president. The backstops with him. You see, the prosecutorial powers of states are vested in an officer called Attorney General and Minister for Justice, who is the principal legal advisor to the president and government. Right. He's, a, he, he, he can be, he's hired or fired by the president. His name is Godfrey Yabu mm. Okay? Now, he, instead of him mm. going after these people, they are rather protecting them because it is a clique. They are all beneficiaries of this wanting dissipation mm -hmm. of public funds and the negativity going on. Sammy, let's wrap up like this. Uh, yesterday was three years since the Ayawasu West War gone uh, conversation happened. People have been maimed, at least eight people, I'm told, have to be compensated. They have not been compensated as yet. Uh, there's a whole commission that was set up, and those short commission recommendations were made. And up until now, those recommendations have not been applied. Again, I'll ask you, what do you think? Um, sad, but not disappointed, not surprised, mm. because um, I have always known that President Ekufuado was a mastermind and the architect of the atrocities we witnessed during the Iowa so West Wogon by he, elections. He was not there. But he, need, he needn't be there. He is a chairman of the Security Council, mm. okay, of our national security. Who were the ones who committed those atrocities? Officers from national security. Who were the ones who gave them those guns, those accoutrements, those vehicles? National security. And national security is headed by the president. Mm -hmm. Are you getting me? So he sanctioned the operations. These guys were recruited immediately the MPP came into office. They were sent to us to and another military bases and trained and armed. Today, some of them are at the Jubilee House, and some of them have been caught to be engaging in Galamse. Others have been caught to be engaging in robbery. You've reviewed the stories here, right? Mm -hmm. Now, these are the people who are now working in the once revered national security apparatus of this country. They were armed and giving orders.
to unleash mayhem and violence on innocent civilians. People were beaten to pop. People were maimed. There are people who have sustained life-threatening conditions as we speak now. Some cannot walk. Some cannot see. The president has not even said a word to commiserate with these people. He never visited them at the hospitals. He has never condemned the atrocities. He set up the short commission to investigate the matter. The commission did a thorough job, produced a report. The president said, no, I disagree with all your recommendations. Issued a white paper. And what, what did he do? He said, I won't work with your recommendations. The guy who assaulted Sam George, mm. the committee, a short commission recommended his prosecution. The president said, no, I won't prosecute him. Wabona, wabona. Why? Because Sam George provoked him. That, 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 that was the first time I heard a lawyer mounting a defense of provocation in the case of assault. Because it is right. Even a first-year law student knows that provo provocation cannot be a defense when it comes to the crime of assault. Provocation only mm. comes in when you are talking about murder. So that provocation can reduce a murder sentence to manslaughter. But when it comes to assault, you cannot assault somebody and say, I was provoked. There is no such defense in law. Yet the president said it was okay for a mm. certain member of parliament to have been assaulted mm. because he was provoked. What? What? Even Double, Double, mm. the one who, mm. who, who, who was wielding weapons and all that without mm. any legal justification, who was recommended for prosecution. The president said, okay, I will prosecute till date. Nothing has happened. What impact would this have on the 2024 elections? Because that's what's on the minds of many Ghanaians. They won't change their winning strategy. And because so what will you do? They killed eight people, managed to change results in Techiman South and other constituencies. In some places, they were not successful, like Savilugu and the, uh, 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 Ododo Diodio. But in other places, they were successful, like in Sefiyo, so Techiman South and all that. So they won't change their winning strategy. And that is why I've advised our comrades in the NDC that it is about time we reviewed our dealings with the NPP. Um, Lord Kome has given us a signal, even though I know he's a coward. I also know that we cannot take the things they are planning, the things they intend to do lightly. Mm. Lord because Kome they will coward. do more, they will do more, okay, mm. than they did in 2020. Lord Kome is a coward. Oh, of course. They will do more than they did in 2020. They won't kill eight people in 2020. They are likely to kill more if we allow them. The atrocities we saw in 2020 will be far more in 2024 mm. because that is what gave them the victory. Why would they change it? I hear and you. So we have to prepare ourselves mm. to, number one, be vigilant and protect the ballot boxes. We are not going to be violent. Ours is to be vigilant and ours is to prepare and put ourselves in the, in the position to at least defend and protect ourselves. Do you trust ourselves. the police? Defend and protect. Do you trust the police? This police service. Yes, with the, under a new leadership of Dr. Dampari. That conversation is a conversation that we will need time for. Because, you know, is a yes I am or not... No? I, I, you I'm, trust I'm, the police, yes or no? Then we can... I, 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 you see, the, the police is an institution of state, and mm. we are all supposed to trust that institution. But do you trust them? But unfortunately, if you look at the people at the helm of affairs today, no. Sami Jenfi, thank you very much. He is the National Communications Officer of the National Democratic Congress. He gave us uh, uh, a lot of his morning this, uh, this morning.